When I started learning AI and computer vision, I did it on a need basis, where if I am working on a project and it requires me to know something, I learn it. And I am a big proponent of this practical learning approach. I don't actually believe in course-based theoretical learning because if you don't get to apply what you learn in a real-life project, you're not going to get a firm grasp on the concepts. On the other hand, Project-based learning gives you many more degrees of freedom to explore. Personally, I feel that getting stuck on projects and learning from my mistakes have made me adept in the core concepts of deep learning and computer vision. With that in mind, let's move on to the basics of ML. The field of machine learning can be divided into three main categories, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. In supervised learning, we have a collection of inputs X and corresponding outputs Y. And we have to write a code which allows the computer to learn the function f of x such that f of x equals y. Let's consider an example where given an image as input X, the computer has to classify it as either a dog where y equals 0 or a cat where y equals 1. So given a large number of images of dogs and cats, and the corresponding labels, which is nothing but the value of y for each image, then using supervised learning, we can obtain a function f of x, which will classify unseen images of these pet animals as either cats or dogs. This is in sharp contrast with unsupervised learning, where we only have a collection of unlabeled inputs, which means we only have a collection of x. Here, the computer learns to identify patterns in the input. The idea stems from the fact that most of the data out there in the world is unlabeled. For example, the dataset of all the Wikipedia pages is nothing but a collection of sentences. On this data, an unsupervised model can be trained to understand the human language. Finally, we have reinforcement learning also known as RL. Here, we have an agent in an environment. The agent looks at the state of the environment and takes an action. If the action taken was good, the agent is rewarded. And if it was bad, the agent is penalized. So it is basically a reward based learning where the agent is free to explore the environment and learn what actions to take in any given state of the environment. RL is used extensively to train self-driving cars and to train computers to play video games. As with any other field of study, building a strong theoretical foundation is essential. This is where online courses come to the rescue. Personally, I found two online courses to be most valuable. The first one is Introduction to Machine Learning by Andrew Wang. This is a free course available on Coursera and it's the very first course that I did when I started learning ML. It covers the mathematical fundamentals of machine learning such as loss functions, gradients, momentum, regularization, and so on. Don't worry if you don't get these terms right now. I'm sure you'll be in a much better position to understand them once you take this course. Another thing I'd like to mention is that in this course, some of the functions have been implemented in MATLAB, which you don't really need to learn. In the real world, you will be implementing ML models using Python packages, which take care of these low-level implementations. So just understand the fundamental concepts and take notes and don't worry too much about the nitty gritty details. The next one is Deep Learning NPTEL course by Professor Mitesh Khapra, which is available as a playlist on YouTube with over 150 videos. This course covers pretty much every concept in the supervised and unsupervised form of learning. As I told you earlier, there are over 150 videos in this course and to be honest, I haven't even watched all of them. My recommendation would be to watch at least the first 50 to 60 videos and then watch the remaining as and when you need or wish to uh, explore a certain area of machine learning or deep learning. These courses are essential to learn the underlying concepts, but they are worth nothing if you don't know how to implement them in code. Before anything, you need to learn Python as it is the most popular programming language for machine learning. Apart from the programming language itself, you need to learn some Python packages because you will be needing them very often. The first one is NumPy, which is a numerical computation library for Python. 
It is used to carry out all sorts of array computation. The next one is matplotlib, which allows us to easily create MATLAB type graphs in Python. This is used extensively to plot loss curves in order to track your model's performance over time. The third one is OS. This is a Python module which allows us to interact with the operating system. It is used to create and delete folders, manage paths and much more. And finally, the OpenCV library. OpenCV stands for Open Source Computer Vision. This library allows us to implement various computer vision algorithms using Python. If you do some projects using OpenCV, you will understand images at a fundamental level, which will be really important once you start getting into convolutional neural networks. Along with these packages, you will need to learn a deep learning framework which will allow you to implement neural networks with just a few lines of code. My favorite one is PyTorch, which is developed and maintained by Facebook. It's very Pythonic compared to some other frameworks like TensorFlow. I have worked with both TensorFlow and PyTorch, but I prefer PyTorch as it is much faster and easier to code and debug. Also, PyTorch can utilize GPU, if your computer has one, to parallelize the tensor operations to speed up training. As discussed at the beginning of this video, your learning will never be complete unless you apply your knowledge on a project. So now, let's take a look at some projects that you can do as a beginner in the field of machine learning. The best project to start with is MNIST Handwritten Digit Classification. This is a dataset of handwritten digits along with their corresponding labels. The goal is to use this dataset to train a model to classify these handwritten digits into one of 10 classes. Once you know the basics of classification, you can easily build complex classifiers using PyTorch. For example, a convolutional neural network that can classify an image as having either a cat or a dog. The last two projects were inclined towards computer vision applications of deep learning. You can also explore other applications of DL such as natural language processing which is also called as NLP. An excellent project of this type is sentiment analysis, where a model is trained to go through a movie review and predict if the review is positive or negative. After doing these basic projects, you can delve into more complex projects like face landmark detection. I have written an entire article on this project on towards data science, so you should be able to follow along pretty easily. In this project, I have trained a model to identify the positions of 68 key points on a person's face. These key points can be used to define the face position, orientation and even expression. I would highly encourage you to take a few minutes of your time to go through this article. And by the way, every course, resource or uh, article that I have mentioned in this video will be provided in the description box below. Apart from this, my final year project was to develop a deep learning model that takes an image as input and describes the image in a sentence. This project combines CNN and LSTM along with attention mechanism to achieve this result. This project is a little more advanced and will require you to be adept with the basics first. However, I will link the prediction notebook for you to try it out yourself. Just paste any image link and run the cell and the code will output a sentence summarizing the key information in the image. You can also see how the model's attention shifts to different parts of the image as it outputs the sentence word by word. That's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later.